Hello everyone, this is Eric at RC Monster Garage Motor Style Shop. So what we do today, uh, we are setting up uh, airplane wings and this is a stick. And the problem is when you get it from the factory, you see all those ripples over here? Those are really bad. Um, let me explain and then we're gonna stretch them out. So if you're new to model airplane, uh, this one is actually balsa and covered with Monaco. This is not foam. Uh, and those one, when they're coming out of the box, you can go and actually fly it like this, but <clears throat> it's not going to be as strong. And let me explain what's going on. So those, all those ripples over here, it's mean that the monocot covering is got disconnected from the wood because when they did their work at China, they probably have a method that they just like put in lay down and, and do it real quick and they don't take the time to stretch it the right way. And then the monocot is disengaging from the balsa and it's weakened the, the structure. Now, this is pretty strong, but it will be much stronger um, considering that this is like a fully robotic airplane. I really don't want to take the risk that the wing will fall, fall apart while doing like steep aerobatic, like do a steep dive or whatever. Also, all the corners here are uh, pretty ugly. Uh, they have a lot of air everywhere. So first, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to do that with a heat gun. And then there is a special iron <coughs> that you actually go over that. Uh, you can see all, all over here, everything is kind of loose. And you know, I don't really like my airplane to, to look bad. So without any further ado, let's do that. Now, uh, I usually use glasses that are a little bit magnified when I do that. And the reason is uh, to see better that I'm not burning the parts. When you can see, when you're younger, you don't need it. When you get older, you need it. Uh, when the Monaco change color, it means that it start burning it's going to shrink too much on you so let's do this you can take any heat gun you cannot use a um, blow dryer for hair you can try it's maybe going to work but i never did it i always use like actually a, a gun for it so what you do is start heating up the area section by section and you need to move you cannot lay the heat in one area And you can see that it's already start stretching by itself. So when it's stretched by itself, it just hot. And now you have to go over with a towel and actually push it into the wood. Now you have to be very careful not to cut it. And the other problem that you can do, if you do it the wrong way, you can warp the wings. So you have to be super, super careful. So you have to move very gently and you have to look at the reflection. See that the reflection just changed. And it's mean that you can actually stretch it. Now, let's show this area versus that area. You can see that this is all wrinkly. And then this is very nice and smooth, but still this is not perfect. Now, while it's warm, you want to go in and push it in. Soft towel will do the job just fine. Um, usually it's, it's better two people to do the job. One person actually holding the wings one the other one do that and always put it on something soft. Uh, so you don't make any holes or damages to anything. Now let's continue on this. I'm gonna do in the video the entire wings. So it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video. So just watch it if you want to learn and just see what I'm doing while I'm explaining. So here again, I'll heat it up. There is a, a little bit loose area here. And then I'm pushing everything toward the outside. And what it does, it helps me also to control the amount of air that there is in those uh, pockets, like those air pockets inside of the monocoat, it's help you to actually push it outside when you do that. And this is Hangar 9. Hangar 9 usually have pretty good stuff, uh, but it's sitting in warehouses in the heat, and this is what usually will happen, even if you leave it in your car, while you're going shopping before you fly, getting your coffee or whatever, uh, you will have this problem now let's look right now and you can see that this is the reflection from the fluorescent light in my shop will actually drop i'm just checking that it's pointing the right place showing that it's actually pretty good so let's jump to the edges okay we're going to go over to the edge the edge here is a little bit loose you can see um it's way too loose but on this we have to be very careful so what we want to do there is a rib here this is kind of like uh, the edge so you want to be careful not to tear this area so we're going to start stretching this area first go over the black piece right there we haven't done those yet
and also your airplane gonna look much nicer Okay, so now this entire line, I know it's good and it's it's pretty warm and everything's sticking nice. Now I'm gonna do this corner right here. So what we're doing, we heat it up and then it stretch gently. Look how nice it's become, nice and stretch. And this is how you want your Monaco to be on your wings. Aerodynamic value of your wings will be much better this way uh, because the air can flow and there's no ripple or anything causing problem. Now, over here, this area, uh, it's kind of touching the wood. This I have to go with the iron later. Uh, the reason is because the heat gun will just separate it and you have to push it back in. Um, now, let's look from this side real quick. And you can see here that this area need to be done. And over here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move around real quick I'm gonna change it this way I'm trying to do that while I can actually re see reflection of light in the surface so here it's very loose so I can see by the light reflection from the fluorescent in the shop that this is too loose so I can actually hit this one first over here you can see it's pretty bad and this is very important area And this is how you fix the factory mistakes. When well, more professional you're gonna be in the hobby, you're gonna want your stuff to look prestige. Usually I build my stuff now because I run the shop. Uh, I'm pretty busy, so I don't have time to do that uh, with all the project that I'm building. So this is actually pretty, pretty fast to do, but it's still gonna take me probably to do the entire airplane uh, more than an hour. And I'm gonna show the wings and then I'm gonna show the fuselage. Now, over here I see that it's actually pretty good. I'm just gonna heat it up just a little bit more because this is the center roots of the wings and I want it to be as tight as possible. This is where all the pressure goes on the, on the wings. Now I'm gonna go quick on those edges. And why are we doing the edges and not the center first? Because you want to actually, those are hollow and this is solid. I want all the solid where I have balsa wood to have the Monaco stick to it first before I go in and heat up the area that actually hollow because then it's not gonna stretch it. So here there is balsa, here there is balsa. This is hollow. If I stretch it first without making sure this is tight, it's gonna pull it backwards. Okay, this is actually pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it. So it's very hot. It's gonna feel like it's burning your hand, but it's not. It's literally 120 to 150 degrees. So it just feel very warm on your fingers, but you're not gonna get uh, burnt or anything. So you don't have to worry about it. And now this is very simple. I'm just looking for the area to get stretched and I'm stop the heat moving, moving to the next one. Okay, and now I have the wings completely stretched, but now we're gonna do the Elrond. Okay, so now let's go on the Elrons, and again, the same technique, I'm just checking everything look uh, pretty promising and stretch when you move it, I can see everything is nice and tight. Uh, and then let's set it up to heat, medium to high heat. And again, go over the Elrons. Now with the Elrons, you have to be careful Although it's a very thick balsa, you can still warp it and there is a servo horn on the beam. Okay, there was a small hiccup, my battery died, so I got another one. So, let's go from the beginning. We still have to heat this thing up. 
make sure the edges are nice and tight and then go near the hinges and what I'm trying to see is again the reflection see that everything is stretching out now now it's kind of boiling hot and what I'm gonna do shut it off and just grab it from the bottom and press it in and again if I like later I can go over the oh, that with the iron but I don't think they're gonna be any need okay this looked pretty good now this edge here need to go with the iron this is good but I won't hear this spot there's a spot over there yeah the bubbles start forming so I know it was not so good okay now I have here this kind of like rectangular shape that I need to stretch uh, I see that it's not stretched as nice as I want it So first I'm gonna go the parameter of the square around it Oh yeah, now it's nice And then here again You can see ripple over there Now we're going to go to the centers. Hopefully the camera catch all this in the right angle. Okay, and then let's go clear one more time. And everything looked pretty good. Then this area here, I have a lot of stuff to stretch. This is the back side. I'm gonna go over this back side. I'm putting the heat very close by here because there's two layers of different color monocoat I want them to be boiling hot so I can actually meld them into place and meld them into one to another See here, very bad. Like wax on, wax off, but it's heat on, heat off. Okay, here there's bubbles. Those are huge bubbles over there. Now, wherever you have wires, move the wires away so you don't melt them. They can melt really, really quick. And you can see here this area is pretty bad. And again, this is the root of the wing, so you have to have this area stretch as much as possible. Yeah, now it's very smooth. No ripple, I cannot feel them. If I don't see them, I try to, to kind of feel where they are. Now here there is a center rib that you have to go over also. 
but let's do those first. You don't have it in the other side, it's only on this side because there is a servo mount. So you have to make sure everything is kind of nicely stretched around it. Here I put a lot of heat on the center because I want to see the grain in the wood. Um, if I don't see it, it's, it's not so good, so I want to, to be stretched a little bit more. Here it's really bad, this inner section. It's actually horrible here. And, uh, when they put it, the factory covering, they did not use enough heat. And now it's create bumps over here. Let me try to show it better. This entire corner here is overlapping one on top of another. And it's actually the piece here was way too big when they put it. I'm going to see like how much we can stretch it uh, without damaging the, the connection here. I'm going to try first to put the heat on the wood to stretch it. Okay. Yeah, I did this with my finger, not with the towel, just so I can see how hot it is. See that it's not burning. And it's actually, it's ticket pretty good. Now, if you look at this, you're gonna see like how it's gonna change right now and suddenly stretch. And this is what we wanted to see, that all the ripple disappeared. Now we're going on the edges and we're almost done. Then we're gonna go over this. This I'm gonna hit with the iron again. I don't want it to separate on me. And I'm gonna show it how to do it like it's simple. And then whatever left here is the, the bottom side of the ailerons. We'll do it real quick. This L one is good. This one is good. Now, a lot of you guys that already know what you're doing, you say, okay, oh yeah, you can do it a different way. Yes, you can. Uh, and if you think that you can do it better, uh, please post a video so other people will learn. Uh, over here I'm gonna do repair this I'm gonna do with the iron but you can see that it's nicely stretched and usually you drop a dime on it and you can drum it and see what happened and then when you look this way it looks still pretty nice and straight and one of the other thing that you want to check on a brand new airplane okay so now we have here the the fuselage the body of the airplane and it's really really bad all over everything is kind of detached Problem is that here I can see where area that it's not touching, uh, not the wood and one, not one another, the two different colors. And you can see here that there is a uh, black is a, just a stripe of monocoat. Then there's a white and a yellow and the white and the yellow overlap almost a quarter inch, but you can lift it up. They're not binding together. Now I do have uh, the iron, but on the iron it's dirty from previous stuff. So I cannot use this. It's going to ruin everything. Are they going to remove this? Uh, if you're very gentle, you can use this, just that, but it's going to cause sometimes some damage. I have a new one here. This new one that they sent is a little bit weird. What's going on here? I guess that you put it this way. Let's figure it out because, yeah, it's just wrapping. Like they keep changing those things like on a daily basis. I don't know why, but I guess they make it so you can wash it or something. No, no, let's tie it down. Okay, this should 
hold for what I need. Let's make another nice nut on it. Now, those uh, irons are very, very hard to find right now. So if you need to get one of those, it's a complete nightmare to even find one. Um, I saw that I lost mine yesterday when I decided to do the video and I could not find any one of those. And this one is kind of, I have it for a long time. It's not even mine. I borrowed from one of my friends a while back and never give it back because I could not find one. Uh, and he's, he would really don't use it. So what I do right now, I set it this thing uh, for high temperature and with the high temperature, I'm just going to go over some area. Now, they do have here those tapes. Those tapes are horrible. I don't know why they don't use painter tape. They use this cheap masking tape that remove the monocot really bad and it's really it'll leave adhesive everywhere. So as soon as you touch something with this, like here there is an adhesive and when you go with the, with the heat, it will just like kind of stick to it and making those burn marks. All those burn marks, it's not only from monocot, it's actually glue that was uh, attached to stuff. So let's see, this is still warming up. Let's give it a second and come back to it. Okay, it's warm enough. Uh, it's a couple minutes past while I passed the video. Now, what we're gonna do is again, uh, everything needs to be very, very gentle. So I'm trying to go between the two lines here. And what I'm gonna do, I would just uh, try to, to make sure you see it's right away, it's separating from the heat. And I'm trying to actually create a connection between those two material. And I want it to be as, as smooth as possible. So right now, I have to go a couple times and it's very hard to see, but I lost some of the ripple here, but I still have some. Um, I think this is, yeah, it's, it's still warming up. You need to be very, very hot to make it perfect. Um, the problem when you do that with this device between hot and burn, it's literally a matter of, of seconds. So you have to keep moving. And here there is a Teflon, uh, material on a fabric that actually preventing the fabric it's itself from burning now when we were kids we always did that uh you actually get uh plans you build your own airplane and then you have to cover them so i probably in my life covered i would say about between eight to 10,000 different model airplanes that I built. I know it sounds a lot, but I'm 47 and I was doing it professionally for a long time, actually building aircraft and selling them and designing them. So it's not that much. I'm trying not to stay too long at one spot but again uh, we just kind of tying it in and we're gonna I'm gonna show right now with the heat gun how to do the rest now the problem also if you have this device this thing is boiling hot so you have to be careful not to touch it now here there is a hole, it's a hollow, so I need to make sure it's getting tight but not getting, don't have any holes in it. Okay, now, what we have to do now, let's see if my circuit breaker is going to take both those two together. Yeah, it's working pretty good. Everything is stretching pretty nice. I'm super happy with it so far. And I don't know if the camera will catch how it changed the shape uh, whenever it's actually uh, get into the to the hole that there is there.
okay so now when we look at it this is actually pretty good and stretched and there is no bubbles when you look from the side and it's have the shape now over here i got a little dirty area because i have a sticker on this i did not see it and the sticker was getting too hot and actually causing problems so this i can just clean it later with some rubbing alcohol it will clean it all off uh, but this is how you do the, the body it's pretty simple you have to stretch it later i'm gonna put this airplane together and then we're gonna go out and fly it and i give you a review about flying don't forget like subscribe it share this is how to stretch the monocot on top of your new rc airplane bye okay so we have to jump to the rudder and elevator and those are not that bad but they're not as good as as well so just gonna go over them really quick this thing look good but this is just horrible the elevator is really really bad i just want to stretch this to make sure it's not gonna open in the air yeah the edge here is really really bad it's really rough right there i'm gonna put it on the edge of the table I know the wood is, is held pretty good. Stretch it. Okay, I'm gonna go this edge too. Those pieces are pretty uh, important to make sure that they are perfect because um, they're, those are big sur moving surfaces and if they're not, you're gonna be in a big trouble. Now it's all stretch. I'm gonna pull it a little bit. I see it's very strong, it's pretty pretty good. Here the edge need a little bit TLC. And look how dirty this thing is already. Okay. So this is good, this is one. Now, number two here, the elevator have a lot of loose area and elevator is controlling up and down and I don't want this thing to fall apart in me. First, I'm gonna make sure it's loose enough from the glues. Try to stretch it, it's pretty good. Make sure it's straight, it's pretty good and straight. And now we're gonna start to heat it up and make sure it's gonna be the right way. So first again I'm going with the iron because it's going to actually stick the, with the heat the monocoat into the wood and then I'm going to stretch it all the area that hollow that they're going to stick better. So this is one it's actually pretty feel pretty good but now I want more heat over here on the centers. And if you want to see this thing get done also on a real airplane, I can show it on my ultralight. How you do the same exact thing on an ultralight airplane that you actually fly in. Okay. Now, after we do this, one thing I need to see that it's still straight and it's still straight and perfect. But you can see this side versus that side that this is all wrinkly and this is kind of nice and stretched now let's do this side and if you have question or you want to see something else don't forget to like subscribe and share and put it on the comment below and i know what you guys want to see also, if you're in Los Angeles and you need to learn how to fly a model airplane, just give me a call and 
I will show you how to do that like a pro. First, stretch pretty good. So far, no warpage, uh, but now I have to do the other side and this is where problems start happening. So we put it on the very edge over here. Uh, for a reason, there is a linkage over here and you don't want it to get pressure on. What I do right now, I heat first the monocoat and now I'm smoothing it with the iron. This is a method to actually make sure that the bottom is always uh, going to be straight and it did not warp to any other shape. And I'm going to go here. This part is really, really bad. And this is again, this is the stick from uh, the Hangar 9. It's really good airplane. It's actually excellent for beginner and advanced. Now you can see this part versus that part, how wrinkly here and here versus how smooth this thing. It's an excellent airplane for beginner, intermediate, and I'm gonna show you a couple different one of this airplane. They have different sizes, so there is a mini, then there is a 30 size, there is a 60 size, there is actually a 15 size that it was more electric, but then they change actually from the original one that was gasoline, actually nitro, not gasoline, to electric and then they move back to gasoline on those. Okay. Now, critical, still straight, straight, straight. Everything is nice and smooth here. Need a little bit more. You always find more because when you apply heat on the other side, it's, it's usually release it a little bit. And that's it. This is going to be ready, good enough. Uh, elevator, up and down, both of them move, did not get warped, nothing loose. The heat did not lose any of the glues. It's very important to try to pull it. Now, all I need to do is take the rest of the parts over here in my shop, assemble it, and we're going to go fly.